to No Filter with Roberto and Dewan. Yes, this is new. Lisa and I wanted to put together a show for you guys. Something a little different than I'm muted, more chill, less muting. More tea. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a little more steeped, if you will. All right, here we'll have a chance to sip on some tea that's been brewing in the <laughs> eSports world and get opinions from many of the voices we know, love, and are sometimes triggered by. Uh, yeah, there are definitely some divisive figures out there and we're more than happy to welcome one of them to the show right now. It's Quote, world's number one <laughs> esports consultant, Rod Slasher Vesla, what's up? Thank ah. you for having me. You guys are welcome, actually. I don't even know why I'm thanking wow. you. Wow, uh, he cursed you to, to us. To, you know, grace you with my presence. Okay. I, I mean, you know, we're... You have to have me on the we're, show. We're so lucky to have you. I do need to know, though, Rod, has anyone actually challenged this title of yours, world's number one esports <laughs> consultant? And then what do you say? Well, it's already written on the internet, and oh as we God. all know, if it's online, it's true. So it doesn't matter if anybody challenges me because everyone already writes world's number one esports consultant. That's fair. I, t I, I tell them to write it. They don't <laughs> question me at all. Then they print it, and now it's real. So as far as I'm concerned, brilliant. There's no one. There's no one in the world that can challenge me. Well, then me. can you tell me how to write so like I can have a million dollars in my bank account? Yeah, like, like what should her tag be yeah. on Twitter? What should I do? Uh, you probably shouldn't want to be a writer if you want to make a million oh. dollars oh, uh, well that's then. the first thing <laughs> that's rule number do. one yeah rule number one don't be in media if you want to make money <laughs> uh, it. don't do it. do it even even on a talk show doing talk shows not a good way to make money so we, we're all we're all failing we're all the making a lot of money part okay well let's try to have some fun then shall all we right. speaking of fun actually Rod, you always seem to have these nsfw twitch streams and you find them so quickly and you put them on your twitter so uh what's the deal man like i've been seeing some serious smut on your timeline he's, he's blushing you know, this is a really good opening question. <laughs> I thought we were gonna do like Teams or Keemstar or whatever, no, no, Vader, no. but no, Not yet. this is Deep. this is really good. Um, Explain yourself. Uh, well, you know, I cover Twitch <laughs> as definitely, you know, one of my main beats is to cover everything going on with Twitch and everything that's happening on the platform. And definitely <laughs> over the last few years, there's been a lot more sexually <laughs> suggestive content, I would say, um, which has been hotly debated whether it's like what women are wearing, mm. which I have to say, I don't give a shit. I never don't, I never care what women wear on, on Twitch or any other platform in general. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of issues surrounding sexual content have been up for debate on the platform. Yes. But then along with that, there has been some explicit other types of content, which for me, I find funny in general. Um, and I also like to showcase all the porn that ends up on Twitch itself. So whether it's like actual porn that's being streamed, that's fantastic to me. I love seeing 5,000 people on Twitch sh sh say pop champ to people <laughs> orgasming on, on Twitch. And then, and I don't know if I can talk about that on the show. And then there's a whole other group of whole other group of streamers that are like making out for a minute and a half which i again don't have a personal problem with i do i find it kind of funny and interesting again so i like to put that out perfect segue and, uh, no i'm joking yeah. i'm kidding no that's not the kind <laughs> oh, of yeah. show not yes. that kind of show guys you guys want to get a live stream sales that is exactly what you need to do i'm just kidding my boss is like cringing in the back right now so <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, uh, Slasher, it's fine, it's entertaining. But what I find most entertaining though is the people that respond to your tweets with just like the nastiest gifts <laughs> that you could possibly find. You just, they really paint a picture of what they might be doing if they were watching Ew. said stream. Ew. It's nasty. Yeah, um, and you know, I can't say anything about why I'm always the first person to find it. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, what do you to... search up? What are you searching up, buddy? I just happen to always uh, be on top of that stuff, you know. <laughs> on top, on the <laughs> always, bottom, you know. On top, on the bottom, you know. <laughs> always. Lisa's, uh, Lisa's got it. Lisa I'm, is. <laughs> I'm on the top queen. of this. I'm on top of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, oh, let's goodness. move on to something more serious. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the reason why you're here because there's a lot of there's a lot of drama. There's always drama. Um, yeah. So uh, in our many years covering esports, we've had organizations like Optic and FaZe be synonymous with like top tier orgs, right? Top tier vibes. Mm -hmm. For a player or content creator, getting on one of those teams would mean respect. Like you've almost you've made it, recognition. Yeah. Uh, but now both of these orgs are actually uh, facing a lot of criticism, Eden Dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get into the Optic drama first. Yeah. Their parent company, Infinity, um, Infinity Entertainment, has been looking to sell, and it seems like Immortals are taking the bidding lead. Mm -hmm. So when this news first broke, what were your thoughts? I mean, you know, looking at this entire situation from a macro perspective, all I can think about is what a just total catastrophe mm. that's 
that's happened to the Optic brand. Um, you know, Hector and a few of his buddies helped build this brand from nothing to where it is now. And Optic is definitely one of the largest brands at all competitive gaming and, and especially in esports. And to see it reduced to the point of it is now where it's looking like the brand is gonna die mm -hmm. and also be taken over by the Immortals um, camp. Like, I have nothing personally against the Immortals team. I think the people working there actually do a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, but for them to come in and to swoop in Optic, what seems like it's gonna be killing the brand and then not have Hector be able to buy the brand back, mm -hmm. it just really is like a sad state of affairs all around. Mm -hmm. Hector can't get the brand and the company that he helped build for, for his whole life. All the, looks like the players and the content creators might be released from the team itself mm -hmm. and you know all the controversy around it so i don't think anything about this has been good mm -hmm. um but it really just kind of shows that if you want to take bin big venture capital right now in esports you have to be very careful from where you take it because even people with a lot of money make stupid decisions Absolutely. as we've seen from the infinite entertainment i mean feels for hector his his pin tweet currently reads i don't have an update at the moment just know that i'm trying have been trying and will continue to try until the final no but know that my commitment to my teammates and my green wall remains true Aww. but uh, like reading this i i didn't uh, at first i felt bad for him and then i'm just like no like this is the bed you've made, like this is the kind of reap what, what you sow situation for him because this is exactly it. He got into bed with someone that eventually did him dirty. Wait, literally? Well, no, not, not <laughs> in a business sense, really. Just like, want to be clear here. <laughs> yeah, in a business sense. Yeah. <sighs> Do not feel Lisa for is the reason that I'm uh, clipping clips all the time, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. You're welcome. There you go. <laughs> he said no. Like, I, I just feel like you. he wanted to yeah. take a step back from all the financial thing that he had to do. Like, everything that was more, like, responsible businessman thing that Hector needed to do for mm -hmm. his org, I feel like he wanted to pass the buck off to the next person, yeah. which is, I mean, he worked really hard. Why not? I get that. But now this next person is completely tanking what he's built. So do, do, like, do you actually feel for Hector here? Or do you kind of understand, like, this is the price you pay with business? I mean, because he's been a pretty good owner from, mm -hmm. you know, my perspective mm -hmm. for, for along with esports, all the players that he's been, that have been under him have spoken well of him, ex-players have spoken well of him, other owners. So in terms of his impact at esports, it's only been a pretty positive thing. So because of that, I do feel for him. Yes, mm -hmm. he made the deal in the end. He did make some money, you know, from, you know, selling the team um, and giving away his shares. Yeah. But I really do kind of feel for him in the situation that he's in now. It doesn't look good. It does not seem like he's going to be able to raise the fund, the amount of money that he needs to buy back the brand, let alone get the amount of money that's going to be required to get the, the brand back and buy into the Call of Duty League. I don't think it's going to be happening. And as of right now, it seems like Optic could very well be dead. Is, is there not like an future. ideal situation where we can have like both be happy like maybe immortals somehow combine their names with the optic name like is there any other way we can have it survive do you think not really i mean uh, immortals are the parent company already owns mibr and they right. bought another brazilian org anyway they like to try to diversify their portfolio with the different brands in esports mm -hmm. but they're really buying this so they can take the owl and the lcs spot more right. so than take the name of optic i see I, so as of right now unless they maybe try to keep the brand optic for just the call of duty league which would make sense then I don't foresee them going to be able to use this the right way. Damn it. I know, it's so sad. Um, so in their eavesdropping podcast, they have a podcast, Hector and Hitch brought up a lot of things that they were so disappointed with, all revolving around them uh, being misled by executives mm -hmm. coming in and not respecting the culture created by and for players. Mm -hmm. um, were you surprised by any of this? No, because people from the outside, including venture capitalists and like, you know, executives from sports teams, they don't know what the, uh, yeah, see, I'm catching myself before I do it on your show. They, they, they don't know what, they don't know what the hell is going on most mm. of the time. They have to be taught by esports professionals and experts. like yourself. Experts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People like me, you know, they're, 
in the world to show them how like esports is working mm -hmm. and even then you still can't get a you know a huge picture of what's going on so you're gonna have people coming in from the outside and making these mistakes but don't get me wrong mm -hmm. in that video he also explicitly named optic j which is ryan musulman yes. who's been around esports for just as long as hector has and what is one of the very old school people so mm -hmm. even an old school person from esports according to him screwed him over maybe yes. more than anyone else did so you could talk about like the outside enforcement from people from you know not from esports but according to even hector it was one of his old buddies that might have you know did him dirty did him, did him over in the end mm -hmm. but do you think this was like for them i know they have their podcast where they spill the tea i guess in a way but do you think this is the right way to handle that like should they be airing all of this laundry out there for everybody to talk about and now they've basically started like an fj campaign mm. which feels bad like you don't want people which to raise campaign, yeah, yeah you don't want to raise pitchforks to who, anybody, who, really. do, who doesn't want who doesn't want that <laughs> you're right you, okay you're you right. Are, are you aware of the current way the internet works right <laughs> now with with uh, organizations that were built on team people creating content the way that phase and optic and 100 thieves even were built from the ground up as people doing content more than having like a championship winning team as they build their brand yeah. so airing shit out on social media and talking a bunch of shit, sorry i guess i'm already okay, in there double it is, is is now how you do things on on current day 2019 internet so yeah, you could look at it and say, oh, I guess it's kind of unprofessional and the brigading is also not great. Yeah. But, I mean, Hector was able to speak his side. He was able to get people to come to the defense of him. Yeah. And in, like, a general way, and I guess we'll talk about it in a second, everything that happened with 100 Thieves and Nick Mertz and um, Faves and Tifu and mm -hmm. Banks only put, like, the spotlight on esports, mm -hmm. actually. So in, the, in this whole past week, it's actually been a whole lot of fun from the outside when all of this is happening because it is in the public so is it like good for them to do all this stuff in public no is it good for literally everybody else in the world <laughs> yes for it's, me for you two for yes. every talk show for every hot take possible <laughs> it's fucking fantastic well of course we love it obviously we are sipping on it i i agree with you but i just mean for outside investors mm. to be looking at something like this and to be looking at everything we on in the esports space right now with orgs and the drama involving some of them as well especially with denial too um, um, and just the scorching of organizations in general, and we'll get to that as well later yeah. on with Denial. Um, I just feel like for investors to be seeing this stuff, it's going to scare them away, and do we not want this space to be filled with more sponsorships, with more investors, with more money, so we can thrive? Yeah, but the, I mean, at least for me, the bigger issues that I'm worried about investors looking in to being concerned with the space are things, for example, outlined in that recent esports ecosystem article by Kotaku mm -hmm. uh, and Cecilia, that would be inflated uh, viewership numbers on Twitch, where, you know, you have Twitch itself or you have big brands um, having fake views that are embedded on p things like Gamespedia. You have outright fake numbers being mm -hmm. reported either by game developers or by the tournament organizers to like double count view count or double count, you know, people that walk through the door, you know, so you can, you can count people in the, um, and the main ticket sales, yeah. or you have teams that are valued at too high valuations mm -hmm. based on media reports that don't really mean anything. And the teams themselves aren't also driving revenue even close to what they're being valued at. So for me, those are much of the more bigger problems that I would think that VCs would have looking into the industry mm -hmm. less so this. And even if there was something not mentioned in that article, but like when the Echo Fox situation, when you have an investor making serious racist anti-semitic yes. comments to you know someone like rick fox like that to me is a what much bigger issue than tifu and banks yelling at each other on twitter that to me is just entertainment and fun for everybody honestly i actually think everyone yelling at each other on twitter and youtube is good for the industry okay i actually think it's good i don't see any problems with like the outside investment um, or like the perception of esports mm -hmm. based on the beef that's going on between everybody. I mean, as long as it doesn't start like actual bullying of people, I'm I'm okay oh, with it. Marissa, I just hate, it's I the internet. Hate... It's the internet. <laughs> it's gonna look at what? <sighs> I don't like bullies. Okay. 
Okay, okay, getting back on track. So speaking of, you know, open discourse, there is an account on Twitter oh, yeah. that likes to put things out there Reddit, without yeah. permission. Oh yeah, on Reddit too. Uh, we're talking about Codburner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Codburner. so mm -hmm. reports, uh, he sometimes reports things that um, may not be founded with any proof, mm -hmm. like saying Optic players will be sold individually to the highest bidder, but yeah. Cod Pro Crimsix yeah. actually addressed the issue on stream saying that he hasn't heard anything about that at all. Um, do you like accounts like Codburner? I mean, he's not trying to be like a journalist. He's mm. just trying to be like a person who's anonymous, who's just like, like you know, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. They really though, they're just putting things out there. They're not trying to make any money on it. They're they're not trying to even gain like personal exposure off it because they're an anonymous account. So no, I don't really find anything wrong with this. And even like, I'm sure Crim Six probably what he says does have like some merit in the way that he responded to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I have personally been through numerous occasions where I have reported on something <laughs> like just like, for example, a Fissure being um, trade uh, wanted to be traded off his team because mm -hmm. he was having problems when he was on the Soul Dynasty. Mm -hmm. uh, he came out and publicly trashed me all over social media, that. saying that I was lying, when in the end I was 100% true, and he was the one lying about me lying. So like, Why? there have been numerous occasions where I will make a report or someone will make a report, and that person either is unaware of oh. like a very close source that is being that is speaking to this person, mm. or is just in total denial with what is going on, or the third option is to try to divert the attention away from what's being said sure. into your personal um, whatever you want to say, even if what even if you know that you're being completely dishonest the way mm. that's going about it. So I can I know Codburner says says stuff and some players will respond, but he's actually been whoever has been running it's been pretty accurate so far. Yeah. So I actually don't care that Crimson's responded. He might <laughs> all the optic players may end up being sold True. one by one in the end anyway. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I don't I can't confirm that, but I don't have a problem with the account, and I I will never always take players what they say. So wait, you're saying you are not the Codburner? <laughs> confirm or deny? Uh, no, I am a Call of Duty champion <laughs> on 100 Thieves. The best uh, AR in <laughs> the game. No one can compete with me and how much I carry my team. Enable? No. I mean, look, Nate Shot wouldn't have another title without me being on 100 Thieves. So I cannot be the cod burner and be the best Call of Duty player in the world at the same time. Printed, I can't believe Sorry, we have number one world, world's number one esports consultant and top tier cod, cod player. player. We're so on at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Slasher, I want to talk to you about Courage for a second mm. because obviously he left Optic for 100 Thieves and ha it has been written on the wall for a while now. It seemed like it anyway. He was doing a lot of videos uh, making it seem like he was already in the house living <laughs> there. Um, he recently did a Reddit AMA where Courage responded to a question asking him if he left Optic because he, he already knew the situation. He had actually responded, when I moved to Texas to join Optic, I got on my plane excited as ever. When I landed, every single member had their Twitter blacked out protesting the decision to drop to drop Optic Halo. At that exact moment, I knew it was going to be short-lived. Like, uh, do you empathize with Courage then? Like, do you understand why he left and maybe that that was a definite red flag between the divide of ownership and players? Well, yeah, but he made a good decision. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he saw the writing on the wall. He lands, everyone has their Twitter blacked out, as you mentioned, that's not a good sign. Yeah. I mean, if I was Courage after signing that, I would I would be trying to leave as soon as possible. I mm. mean, um, he made a good career move. He joined 100 Thieves, that's the best place that he could have gone. He mm -hmm. has been in the house for a while. Um, and Nick Merckx just left, so it could not have been better timing for this, you know, circle of <laughs> insanity that's gone on the last week or so. Yeah, it seems like uh, Courage is always on top of things, hey? Yeah, he's, I love like, him he's, so much. His like, content's forward. friggin' hilarious. Yeah, it just feels bad for him because he had, had always been an Optic yeah. fanboy. He loved Optic from the start. He yeah. always cheered for Optic, even when he was I... on the desk and he shouldn't have. Oh, I really feel so bad for people that have like a million followers too and they're making up to a million right, dollars a year. I, I feel so bad that he had to go from optic to a hundred feet. No. Oh, poor guy. I'm applauding he, he his career only, moves. You have to remember she supports the Toronto Blue, I was at Blue Jays. Yeah, that's right. And the Leafs, so what? like she no. has that kind of weird allegiance thing. No, no but I do, <laughs> like I applaud him for making just smart career moves. Yeah, that's no. all. One last yeah, question yes. on the optic situation though, is in your mind, then is there no possible way that optic can be saved um i personally think that immortals if they do if the immortals organization ends up buying the optic brand which is still looking very likely mm -hmm. 
that they just give it to Hector. Now, mm. you know, that doesn't make any sense financially. Um, but I, for me, they're really buying the spot. They're really buying the brand to get the LCS and the OWL yeah. spot. Yeah. And if they're planning on releasing all the players anyway, and maybe even like putting, maybe not killing the brand, but not using it so much for now, then just give it back to yeah. Hector and let him Rebuild. run things. I know that's not how business works, and it's probably not a great business decision, but I think for the greater good of esports, that would yeah. be the best way to go about things. Definitely, I agree. Well, let's hope. Let's cross mm -hmm. fingers. Uh, let's shift gears and move over to another story, big story, yeah. with the whole FaZe versus Tifu drama. Tell us the story of that day when that news <laughs> broke, because it must have been crazy. Yeah. I did talk to Tifu a little bit on on that day as well and yeah it, it was crazy though you got to understand this is a normal day for mini sports <laughs> there's crazy stuff happening all the time i got to be able to handle it professionally so it wasn't, it wasn't oh, that okay it wasn't I mean, that big a, of a deal he's a professional no big deal but uh, we do want to know where you stand on the situation now who are you siding with uh okay so you know i i've also been talking about this a lot and i think especially as the days have gone by i've mm -hmm. come to the conclusion that um, I have no sympathy for anyone in this situation at all. Mm. Okay, you have, um, and I'll kind of go through why that is. Okay. So, Tifu did sign a, an original contract. He, he did willingly sign this. The contract itself was awful, was awful in terms of the salary. It was awful in terms of the percentages in there. It was awful in terms of the way that... Um, it was structured. It is very possible illegal based on the way that uh, FaZe works in California by maybe not being a talent agency in the, in the way that um, hmm. contracts work there. So everything to do with the contract itself is terrible, true. But Tifu also did sign this terrible contract, knowing the length of the contract and how long it was going to be in the very end. Uh, Tifu is unique from anyone else in this entire industry, maybe from all, not just esports, but like all of streaming and gaming or whatever, in terms of how much he grew from when he signed to phase to where he is now. There is no other single individual in this entire other industry that has grown as much as he has in terms of his stream numbers, his subscriptions, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, yeah. like all, all of that. Um, he, his case is so unique in that way. Mm -hmm. So now knowing that, you got to look at both sides here. Um, he's still in this bad contract, which he probably should have never signed to begin with based on the way that it was structured. Uh, but you know, he did in the end. And now he wants to get out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he's trying to get out of it. Also, uh, uh, the people who wrote this contract is Eric Anderson, who is the person that runs esports at FaZe. As a little bit of a side note, mm -hmm. Banks has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Literally zero, no power. He has no power in phase. He has no power over this decision. He didn't write the contract. He didn't write the terms. He's not the one negotiating with Tifu. He's literally nothing to do with anything other than be entertainment for everyone on the internet. Well, it's like a face. He's That's just a the thing. face for the org. He, right? But he, he took to Twitter, so we immediately sent them to yeah. as like the opposing figures yeah. here because of the way he responded on Twitter. However, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair uh, didn't the orgs did say like they updated the contract over the years? It's not like uh, Tifu was stuck to the original one because they offered him like no. bonus, like increase in salary and stuff. Mm. He, but he was stuck to the original one really? because he refused to resign oh. for a better deal. Because if he signs for a better deal, then the contract is extended. Yes, right. And he did not want to. So every time FaZe came to him with an ex because yeah, he only was making two thousand dollars off salary, and he in the contract was all messed up. But mm -hmm. he was making so much money from social media and yeah. streaming that he didn't want to renegotiate the contract for whatever how much money they were trying to give him for the salary the low salary didn't matter to him because wow. he's already met making so much money yeah. so yeah phase came back to him and tried to offer him back saying that they offered him a million dollars a year is pretty accurate to what I have actually heard the offer was, mm. but Banks did not want to re-sign this contract. And I'll give you a little bit of detail why, okay. is that, you know, I know Eric Anderson, the person who actually runs these force for FaZe, and that is like in the background, not like a public facing figure. Um, and I've, I've had previous experiences with him and other players, mm -hmm. and other players have told me that he is kind of a prickly person to deal with in contract situations. Mm. So, 
from, from what I have spoken to sources of mine, Tifu was um he felt disrespected this was a this was a disrespect oh. on tifu's end from eric anderson and the phase crew not mm. fucking banks he doesn't no, <laughs> nobody cared banks doesn't matter here. again to, again to continue to reiterate nothing to do with anything he felt disrespected by eric anderson and then from then on no matter what type of contract they would send him as a renegotiation, he refused to sign mm. and he only wanted out of the organization. Mm. FaZe and Eric Anderson refused to let him go mm. out of his contract. Okay. Can't okay. he buy himself out of his contract? Is there not a thing like no. that? No? No nope. clause. <gasps> nope. Yeah. Okay. Oh but my like, God. So, <laughs> so to, to that point, um, I just feel like, because it was all over for me when I realized that this is the case, because like Banks seemed to be playing the possessive boyfriend <laughs> on Twitter, like totally triggered me. Um, I'm referring to the tweet where he said, because I effing helped him blow up and change that kid's entire life, the very least I could ask for in return is that he stayed loyal to me and the brand that gave him his first real shot. Like what? FaZe is what's best for him. That's like, abusive relationship stuff just, right there. Like, I just feel like let him, just let him go, let him fly. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, that's the, for sure. You gave him his first shot, but he completely blew up. And I get that you take a gamble on some of the kids that you sign. I understand that, and that's a risk that you take as an org. Yeah. Um, but now, now what? Like, it's a same. Like, listen, Tupac wanted to leave Suge Knight. You know that, right? And that's why that's <laughs> things went down, and he wanted to start his own label. And this is what happens when people are possessive. Suge Knight was possessive, so this is what phase. Honestly, Banks made it seem to me that he was just. A Suge Knight. <laughs> Straight up. Real life yeah. no comparison right there. Real, real I mean, life okay. FaZe did have an impact on Tifu's rise. Like, sure. it is, like, he, Tifu can't just say it was all him. FaZe indisputably did have a pretty big impact on how much he grew. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it was not just him. Tifu would have grown that way. Maybe it's hard to say if it would have happened with or without phase, but Tifu was going to grow at, at a point. At a certain point, he was growing fast enough. It, it didn't matter um, mm. for phase. But here, here's why I am not totally on Tifu's side, even though I believe um, in general, probably Eric, considering everything that happened, should have just released him from the contract. Mm -hmm. Ninja, who is, especially in the last two years, a much bigger personality. Yes of course, makes, making a lot more money, a lot more media attention, um, was the biggest star on Twitch and probably still is to this day. Mm -hmm. And he was signed onto an older contract, Luminosity Gaming, mm -hmm. who has a thousand times less pull or clout or whatever you want to call it. Canadian uh, compared org, to Fades. Canadian org. Yes, well, a Canadian, org that, a Canadian org that loves to hold players hostage oh. for money. Oh, right. Um, Why'd you have to say that now? Oops. No, it looks bad. Because that's what Steve does, the Luminosity. But oh. uh, so, you know, um, so you have... Uh, Cheers. So, <laughs> so you have Ninja mm -hmm. in an organization like LG who has nowhere close to the amount of power and pull that FaZe has. Mm -hmm. And with an owner like Steve Mi Mida, who I know quite well in terms of him signing players like, let's say, Overwatch players before Overwatch League started to specifically hold them hostage and to sign them for the highest bidder oh, wow. before Overwatch League starts. So Steve is a great businessman, mm -hmm. but Steve is also known for, you know, having players in the in kind of these predatory contracts himself. And mm -hmm. Ninja, not one time, not through this entire contract, ever complained, right. whined on social media, tried to get out of the contract, uh, you try to use his fans to leverage himself against Luminosity mm -hmm. Gaming mm -hmm. or try to get with a lawyer to get himself out of the contract. Yes. And Ninja had so much larger of a reason to try to get out of LG mm -hmm. than Tifu did and FaZe. They were in the exact same situation and Ninja never did that. Yeah. And for me, like that gets a lot of like respect for me, but I think it's also indicative of the other biggest star in our entire industry having the exact same situation mm -hmm. with a better reason to do what Tifu did and he did not do anything close to what he did. So in that way, I look at Tifu and I'm like, well, Ninja had an even worse contract than you did. Didn't complain, didn't cry, didn't use a lawyer, didn't use a whole public social media campaign. Left LG after and now has done his uh, his team Ninja, you know, his own thing mm -hmm. since then. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so on that way, you know, I can't really feel for Tifu. Also on the side of FaZe, 
why, if I'm Eric Anderson, do I have to let Tifu out of the contract? Right now, he's still in the contract. I am pretty sure Tifu and Cloaksy are going to be playing under phase at the Fortnite World Cup in New York next month. It is going to be nuts because um, we don't actually know what they're, what's going to happen. Is Tifu and Cloaksy going to show up in a phase jersey? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be forced to wear phase jerseys? Are, are they going to not do it? Is that going to nullify the contract? And maybe Ooh. Tifu can't win his lawsuit if he oh. doesn't wear. So as of now, if I'm phase, I don't even know if I should let him out other than like writing an awful contract to begin with and being an ass to begin with. So in the end, um, on top of all of this, on top of all of this, right? Tifu is making millions of dollars a year. Yep. FaZe is making million dollars a year. <laughs> yep. Again, I do not have a whole lot of sympathy for a bunch <laughs> of millionaires fighting with each other on millions. the internet, on social media, about how much more millions of dollars they should make. Okay, I'm not saying they don't deserve to make the millions of dollars. Yep. They do deserve to make the money. I just don't yep. have a lot of sympathy for either of them. Okay, fine. Uh, we're getting a little long yeah, on that in note. the tooth here. NRT is getting cold. cold. So, almost done. Uh, yeah, we should move on to our last. Our last sip today. <laughs> All right, has to be on the fall of Denial Esports. Rod, why don't you give us your hot take on Denial's fall from grace, if there was grace. <laughs> Uh, well, so if you don't have a lot, of, a lot of time, I'll just say, yeah, well, how about not trusting a bunch of idiots to run your organization? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if point. you see a bunch of idiots sign the organization, maybe don't sign there. Right. But, but, to be fair, when you <laughs> are young and yes. eager and hungry to be in esports and you finally get an org that pays attention to you and asks if you maybe want to be a part of it and they yeah. say they're going to fly you somewhere. From the outside, give you they money. look legitimate. They look yeah. legitimate from an outsider's perspective. They've got a check mark on Twitter. Yeah, that's a big okay, deal. Okay, that means something. <laughs> He's not impressed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I mean, I have a check mark on Twitter. Oh, well, that means nothing you, then. So, so who met? I mean, you two don't actually. I, do. I don't. I don't. Cheers, I know. baby. Cheers, Mark Club. Does. Club. We, we it does. <laughs> Come on, well, Squad. Come on, Squad. You better pay all that money. So really, I mean, look, denial. If if anyone knew, saw who the new the new owners were, denial were, he would immediately be able to come to the conclusion. This is probably not a good idea. So yeah. obviously, we need esports to be more professional, mm -hmm. and it's good that they're leaving. But this is like, everyone should have expected this. Right. We have to uh, point fair. out the tweets, right? Yeah, yeah. For, I mean, obviously, you saw like the nine tweets uh, <laughs> the that, yeah, yeah, the CEO put Fantastic. out. Fantastic. I love it. They I were, love it. They were so great. A lot of them finger pointing, of course. He called out Sir Scoot, saying <laughs> that he played the old man on the lawn and won. His final tweet reads, I wish you the best of luck on your player union, obviously still directed towards our scoots. Uh, to the journalists, I'll miss your edgy articles and I'm sure your likes will feel a little low now that I'm gone. Rod, who is the journalist? Who is he talking about? Yeah, who is he talking about? Is that you? Uh, no, oh. he would <laughs> never dare to say that shit about me, that little bit. Um, take another sip. Uh, I, I am not, I'm not quite sure, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll find okay. out for you. Oh, there you go. Okay. Give uh, us the juice. Just, uh, yeah, just quickly here. Um, I want to talk about Sir Scoots' mission because he's still on it. So are, are you supporting him in a way, or is he going to actually end up having to pay these players, or do you feel like Denial will somehow redeem themselves in the end and actually pay them? Um, there, could, there could always be a third new owner, and then another new owner comes in and ends up paying the players. Okay. Denial could just die, and <laughs> nobody gets paid. I kind of almost feel like that's the most likely situation. Denial goes bankrupt, the organization ends, and nobody gets paid any money. But Scoots has done a pretty good job of getting people their money back, so mm -hmm. I, I, I feel for him. Also, because me and Scoots kind of made up this past week, I've Aww. actually... I'm I'm more hopeful that he does than not because I don't actually hate him as much as I did three weeks ago. <laughs> Wait, there's there's I, five I between them? Yeah, I didn't know you guys had beef. Just I just thought you were oh, always Oh, we've left. had huge beef. Huge beef. Let's go, baby, let's go. What? <laughs> give me give me the summary. What was what was the uh, beef? T L D R and the beef because you gotta go. Okay, we had a show for five years. Uh -huh. We had the biggest esports show, me, DJ Wheat, and him, called Live on Three. Oh. And um, that was going well, but we had to end the show later on because Wheat moved to work for Twitch, and Scoots was running EG at the time, and I was also working. Uh, but, like, I had some... I got into... it. You know, I've been having, like, an internet uh, feud with Thorin and some of Richard What's Lewis. What's and new? Scoots, even though we were buds at the time, he became really tight with them. Oh. And he decided he decided to take sides with them against me. Yes. So that resulted in a beef that's lasted about three years now, which Aww. we've only just kind of 
And then you're, well, cheers you're, you're to on the redemption, bench. huh? And friends. Cheers, cheers, Rainbow Girl. Cheers, Rod. Uh, well, Slasher, it's good to hear. You're always entertaining to chat with. We appreciate your honesty and your random smutty Twitch channel callouts. Sure. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Uh, you guys are welcome for having me. I <laughs> oh mean, again, for, for gracing you. If you two want to end up on live stream fails, you can just end the show just like I post those videos. Have uh, more than welcome to. All right, thanks for the yeah, yeah. thanks we'll, for the advice. We'll, we'll heed the advice. We'll uh, see. Lisa, since we spent this whole time, you know, talking about others, we now must spill something about ourselves. Oh. I mean, we obviously can't match that kind of drama, no. but I thought we just finish this little show that we're doing right now with um, a little DM slide, shall we? Oh well, no! I, wanna, I want you to read me your last random DM okay. that you got right now. And I'll, uh, and I'll pull up mine. I've always had open DMs, and you know what? They, they're pretty tame, well, every, but every once in a while I get one yeah. funny one. Um, okay. I'm not gonna name names, so one here. Okay. <laughs> this, I, I like this one, this one's simple, okay? So okay. he says, I'm, I think it's a he. <laughs> my wife, how can I serve you? For oh. the record, I'm not married, so that is not my husband. <laughs> okay, okay. I like um, that though. It's and like, you, you didn't respond? No. Okay. Well, maybe I should have. I should be like, go do the dishes, you know? No, like, no, you can't. Oh, no? no, you can't, because no. the second you accept, then they'll just keep DMs and you can't do it. It's true. Uh, What's this yours? one I did not accept. He's messaged, messaged me several times. Uh, <laughs> first, he said hi, then hello, yeah. then question mark. Oh, I love the spam. Then question mark, <laughs> then hi. And then uh, several weeks later, can you help me, dear? He spelled all these things wrong. Oh, no. I want to go to Canada. Can you help me? Oh no, we're not going to do it because I can't help him. I can't accept this. He was asking for help and I you know. abandoned him. What if something happened? I'm sorry, random person on the internet. There you go, guys. Maybe Don't ever time. go to Marissa's DMs if you need help <laughs> if getting into Canada. They're open for business only. Listen, that does it for our first episode. Please let us know what you think by dropping a comment in chat. Share a biz. Follow us on all the socials. That's right. We're at Squad State everywhere. And obviously, our DMs are open. <laughs> Cheers.